This is Rock and Roll English. Real people, real English. Here's your host, Martin Johnson. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll English. Episode number 222, baby. Oh yeah. In today's episode, we have a special guest. That's right. I speak to Lara from NBU English. Boost your English. Lara also has a podcast. I will um, include links of this in the show notes. And I highly recommend you check it out because it's very focused on vocabulary and it uses stories. And as you know, I love vocabulary and stories. Now, normally when I've had guests on the podcast before, I must admit the episodes maybe have not been so exciting, but that is not the case today. Um, we speak about fun ways to learn languages, but in an R&R English way. Stories, laughs, you know the R&R English way. I don't actually know why I'm explaining it. Um, but I actually do share a good few stories about my learning Italian experience. And Lara shares what I think are two amazing tips to basically improve your English, which we will speak about at the end. Unfortunately, there's not too much R&R vocabulary because we got a bit lost in the conversation. But I will speak to you again at the end for the amazing tips, the R&R vocabulary. But in the meantime, happy listening. So hello, Lara, and welcome to Rock and Roll English. Hi, and welcome, Marty, for having me. No problem at all. An absolute pleasure. Um, the first thing I have to say to you is what a wonderful, wonderful name that you have. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I know we have something in common, don't we? Yeah, we, we do. It's almost like I've specifically chosen you to come on the podcast because you have the name Lara, which in case some of the listeners don't know, is actually the name of Baby R&R. &R. Um, yeah, I, I, was, I couldn't believe it when I saw that your name was Lara because it's not such a common name, really, is it? Not at all. No, not even where I'm from. Um, yeah. There's very few of them. So, yeah. Exactly. Um, in fact, with um, my wife, who um, I refer to on the podcast as Mrs. R&R, &R, just in case you're interested, um, when we were talking about it, we had a nightmare with the name. And I said to her, You're like, I really like the name Lara. I imagined someone called Lara, dark hair with like a long ponytail. And she said to me, you're just imagining Lara Croft from Tomb Raider. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I think that's the, the most famous Lara. Um, there's yeah. also another Lara from Dr. Shivago. I think that's... Okay. But that's, I think that's what old people associate it with. But now our generation, yes, it would be Lara yeah. Croft. L Lara Croft. And I mean, if there's one person I want my daughter to grow up to be like is definitely Lara Croft. Yeah, I don't so, know. Uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about that in, <laughs> in 15 to 20 years. If we're going to be happy about that. Yeah. Okay. We will see. Um, so tell us a bit about you, Lara. Where are you from? What do you do? Yes. So I am an English teacher. I was born mm -hmm. and raised in Milan, Italy. And um, I've always been in love with the English language. I've always had a passion for it. <laughs> Yeah, well, your English is absolutely amazing. Just so the listeners know, I actually made a mistake and thought Lara was American. And I had actually planned a podcast for us to do about the differences between the UK and the US. And then she told me, no, I'm Italian. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, so what, your English is absolutely amazing. So well done Thank on the you. job that um, you have done. So I thought in today's podcast, we could actually... Um, talk about learning languages because I think you're in a better position than most people to be honest because you've conquered the language so well um, I speak another language but which is actually obviously your native language but I'm too embarrassed to actually speak it with you because your English is so good that's always the thing isn't it if you speak to someone in another language and they speak your language really well it's like oh I don't want to switch it becomes intimidating yes <laughs> yeah. exactly do not want to switch um, so I think I've, I've done five minutes research, as I always do for every podcast. I think I actually did 10 minutes um, for you. Um, I think I'm right in saying that you were born in 1989. Is that right? Correct. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, which I was very happy about because I, I kind of have a problem talking to people born. Like for me, it's bad enough to talk to people that were born in the 90s. Um, but now people like 
adults are born like who yeah. obviously you speak to that have been born this century in the, like after the year 2000 when were you born uh, 1984 okay um which is a great year because george orwell wrote a very famous book about that year true that um yes yeah, so um you were born in the same year as my wife actually and i always tell my wife it's lucky she was born in that year and she was actually born in november of that year because otherwise I just could not have married her. She just made the cut. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Lovely R&R vocabulary. They just made the cut. So just about enough to fit in the category of people that could be my wife, because otherwise someone born in 1990 just would not have worked. Um, So, yes, let's actually get to this podcast. Okay, so I've got lots of ways um, here, fun ways, apparently, um, to learn a language and we can talk about them see if you did them because as I said you're the person to listen to Every, everyone listen to Lara don't listen to me <laughs> okay um, so the first one is um, change the language on your phone Have you? did you do that? definitely I think it was one of the first things that I did yeah and I, I had like a Nokia you know one of those old ones that would never break but still it did have the functionality I could change the language and I sure thing did yeah, um, lovely term as well. I sure thing did. I absolutely did that. Um, I have actually tried this as well, changed it um, to Italian. But I must admit, after about a couple of weeks, I kind of just get almost a, a headache and just think, oh, for God's sake, like, I'm just putting this back to English. The pro- It's OK with like your messages. The problem is when you go into the settings, yeah. I, I don't even understand most of those terms in English. And then when I see them in Italian, I'm thinking, oh, what the fuck is this? It's just a nightmare. So then I I always change it back. That makes sense. But how often do you have to change the settings anyway, though? Uh, not often, but just that time when you do. OK, <laughs> you have to be prepared. Uh, when I was actually younger on the old Nokia phones, I noticed you called it a Nokia uh-huh. um, with your uh, American pronunciation. But yeah, with the Nokia phones, a good trick to do for, with your friends, actually that we used to do was take the phone and immediately change the language to like Arabic. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. so then they had no idea how about to how to back. do anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a fun one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so another one here is learn some jokes. So did you ever do that? Literally like learn like actual jokes? I'm not really good at telling jokes in any <laughs> language. Um, I think I know one joke, sort of. Um, okay. But um, I've actually never done it. I think it's a great way because it, you know, you got to memorize a dialogue and you got to really nail the accent. So I think it is a great way. Yeah, I agree. Lovely term again there. You have to really nail the accent. Like, do you have to get it perfectly? Um, With Italian, actually, um, not so much a joke, but a phrase I learned very early on. I, I literally had no idea how to speak Italian. I'd I didn't even know how to say thank you. I had to ask someone how to say that. But the one thing I did learn was to say, where's the toilet? I'm pissing my pants. And um, people thought it was hilarious when we'd be <laughs> out guess. in a bar and I would say like some of the, they look at like the strange foreigner that can't speak Italian. And then I just used to come out with, where's the toilet? I'm pissing my pants here. <laughs> um, and that used to get a few laughs. And I used to think, oh, wow, I'm kind of in with the crowd now. That used to make me feel um, quite cool. Um, so another one here, I think um, this one's very relevant, especially for both of us, is listen to a podcast. Did you do that much? Were podcasts even around when you were learning English? They weren't, unfortunately. Yeah. I would have loved it. Are you kidding me? It's like <laughs> you got so much content. Most of it is for free. Um, you can listen to it anywhere you want. Um, so, yeah, no, definitely I cannot rely on podcasts, unfortunately. But I would, oh. I definitely would now if I, if I were to go back. Yeah, nice. Um, again, with Italian, I actually did this um, at the beginning. I listened to podcasts, but I, I had to really focus. That's that, that was the thing. And even now, sometimes I think, oh, I'll listen to a podcast in Italian. But I just haven't got the focus because you have to really, really concentrate. And then if I'm listening to a podcast and doing something else, I basically have to sit down <laughs> with my eyes closed in a room Which is and not, not move. the point of the podcast. <laughs> exactly. Usually you should be able to do more than one thing. But 
Uh, exactly. So yeah, that that's not so good for me. Um, but obviously, I hope it is for all the listeners that are <laughs> listening to podcasts in another language. Um, Everybody's just like sitting right now at home, sitting sitting on their couch with their eyes closed, focused, y- trying to exactly. understand every word. Perfect technique to understand everything that happens in a podcast. Um, so another one here is take some classes, but not, for example, English classes to do something else in the language, like a dance class, a yoga class or something like this. Did you ever do that? I did. Um, actually, when I was in the States, I um, tried to do some improv. Okay. So improvisation classes. So it's basically where you get up on a stage, you have no script, you got nothing prepared, and you just got to improvise. And that's why it's called mm. improv. And okay. that really challenges, you know, you as as a learner because you got to come up with full sentences and um, you got to do it in a split second. You got no time to yeah. think. And that really helps you with building your vocabulary um, and just helps you with, you know, becoming more confident because if you can do that, you can do whatever you want. Of course. Yeah. Wow. That sounds fantastic. I actually did a course, I think only last year, and it was about uh, freestyling in uh, like your target language. Um, so freestyle and basically like rapping. I mean, this was an online thing. Like I wasn't like, <laughs> I'm not a rapper. Um, as a, <laughs> maybe you, you might have already well, guessed. Now I, I kind of want to hear something. <laughs> um, but basically it was teaching you how to um, think of words quickly, words that rhyme and stuff like this. Um, so basically for like a, I think it was like a one week course. I was just walking around my house, just rapping. And uh, Mrs. R&R was looking at me quite strangely to say, like, what the hell do you think you're doing? But there is a lot of logic behind it, as you just mentioned, of like your brain having to look for words like under pressure really quickly. Um, So, yeah, improv or rapping both work um, very well if um, anyone's interested. Um, So another one is go to a language meetup. Um, did you ever try that one? I've done that a lot. Um, not when I was learning English, but now I'm trying to learn Spanish. Mm-hmm. Um, and yes, it's definitely, it helps. Again, it's free. You get to meet other people. Um, the only thing that I usually suggest is come up with a topic because otherwise, if you end up going to the same meetup over and over again, you end up meeting new people and you end up talking about the same things over and over again. You're going to be great at introducing yourself and you're not going to learn how to do anything else or how to speak about anything else. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I actually think a similar thing to that, um, living abroad. So I've lived abroad for quite a few years now. And every time I meet, especially another English person or English speaking person here, I always go through the same yeah. thing. It's like, uh, how long have you been here? Why did you come here? And I think exactly. I was thinking of like just getting like a piece of paper <laughs> and then just just giving them the piece of paper for that um, introduction because it's a nightmare. But when I tried to go to like language meetups, um, especially at the beginning, like I said, I didn't really speak any Italian. I used to find these things online because I came to Italy. I didn't actually know anyone. So I thought this would be a good way as well to like get to know some people. And I basically would stand in the corner uh, with my hands in my pockets. Really? <laughs> for, yeah, well, I, I was just too embarrassed to sort of talk to people. And then someone would normally take pity on me. Um, so a nice term there to basically feel sorry for me and then start talking quickly realize I couldn't really speak Italian and then so I would just have to speak English so I think that's why it took quite a few years to uh, get to a decent level in Italian yeah yeah but never mind never mind so let's move on to the next one what about learn some nursery rhymes so nursery rhymes are the things maybe like um or even almost songs that you can sing to children, things like this. Did you do that? Um, I love I love rhymes in general. So okay. any level from like kids, like children's rhymes uh, all the way up to Eminem, although that's considered rapping, but that still rhymes. Um, well, yeah, that's what I, my next question. Have you tried <laughs> freestyling? Because maybe we could start a band, like a freestyling. I used to sing along to Eminem. Okay, wow. And that's how I got a lot of my fluency, actually, because Eminem was, was pretty big when I was 16, 15, 16 years old. 
Yeah. Um, and so I did a lot of – that's when the internet was really becoming a thing. So I was first able to read the lyrics to my favorite songs, which was a huge change for me. Um, and so, yeah, I would I would practice a lot. I would just sing along. Um, but, yeah, I think all kinds of rhymes. Anything like even tongue twisters. I don't know if that's considered – did I ruin – did I spoil a point – that you had planned for no. later. Okay. <laughs> no, don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. You're fine. You're fine. Keep going. You can do anything you want on this podcast. Right. It's not called rock and roll English for nothing. Okay. It's everyone can just do whatever the fuck they want. Okay. <laughs> All right. Then I'm going to talk about tongue twisters. No, but really okay. any sort, any sort of like rhyme. Uh, mm. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Um, so, uh, well, about nursery rhymes. Um, when I first arrived, everybody said to me, like, buy children's books and or like watch children's cartoons. And I thought that, that's a good idea. But then I found it really frustrating that I couldn't understand like a program that was made for a three year old. And I was like really jealous you know, of three year olds. I think it's a little bit of a misconception that cartoons or animated movies like have easier dialogues to understand. Mm. I don't think that's necessarily true. Those are meant for, you know, native speakers anyway, albeit little yeah. ones. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't find them that much easier. Maybe the story is easier to follow, the plot, but yeah, yeah, well, I completely agree. In fact, um, I bought a book for my daughter recently. Obviously, not for her to read. I mean, she's not even one month old yet, but. Um, <laughs> I thought I'll read her a few bedtime stories, you know, in English, because I'm very obviously keen to make sure that she speaks English. Um, And so I was reading this book, this story to her. And I'm telling you, there were a few words in there. And I was like, what the fuck does that mean? (laughs) Like, This is supposed to be for like newborn children. And I'm having difficulty with the word. I actually think it's because like it's kind of like kids language. Like um, I'm finding this out now. With, with Italian that my wife who is Italian Mrs. R&R um, when she says things she uses like this little baby language stuff which you know I have never used before because I, I, have, I haven't been hanging around with many babies yeah. since um, since I arrived in Italy so I think it's actually quite difficult to actually know all of this just when you um, thought language. you were learning Italian there's a <laughs> exactly. whole new Italian language they gotta learn it, exactly and and the same for her um so for example when it's time for the baby to eat i say um i say are you ready for some din dins which is obviously a nice way to say dinner um but obviously you don't normally find that in textbooks right. um din dins yeah because I, generally i think it's for children that can't actually properly speak yet but um never mind so um very much changing the topic going from children's language to um this next point um, it says, learn some good swear words for your target language. Now, I would imagine you did that. The f- that's the first thing I think everybody does. You know, um, I don't know if those were the first things that I learned. I know that that's the thing that most new learners get excited about. Just like, oh, teach yeah. me all the, the bad words that you know. Um, I think most of those swear words that I know, I learned from Eminem, like we were saying. Because okay. that's just yeah. like, and so I learned a <laughs> Like the big ones, um, and okay. even ones that are very creative that you wouldn't normally use. So, um, but luckily, my mom doesn't speak any English, so she had no idea what I was learning. She was just okay. proud of yep. me for for learning English. She didn't know what I was saying. <laughs> uh, but yeah, sure. If that motivates you, why not learn how to curse? Yeah. <laughs> Um, to curse, yeah, that that's also an American expression. We say to swear, to say bad oh. words, um, but. Yeah, what I was actually about to say about that is the reason everyone remembers them. For example, I re- even remember like a swear word in German when I w- from when I went to Germany when I was, I think, about 12, um, is because they're more memorable. So and yeah. they kind of like hit an emotion. So that's why I always try to tell people when you learn vocabulary, try to actually make it memorable in some crazy way. Totally. Or then like if you can connect it to something, especially like an emotion, then that obviously will help you. Um, to remember it and speaking of vocabulary you're very big on vocabulary aren't you Lara yep 
Yeah, absolutely. So tell us more about your website, where we can find you. So, yeah, like I said, um, I think vocabulary is a huge, huge part of being able to speak a language fluently, obviously, uh, because the more vocabulary you know, the more creative you can get with the language, which is... I 100% agree. And I, as I always point out to people, um, with vocabulary, you can actually communicate. If you just learn grammar, That's right. you, you, I mean, you can have a perfect sentence with grammar, but it, you know, it might not make much sense or you might not be able to communicate your message with it. But if I say to you, for example, um, yesterday I go shop. OK, that's not grammatically correct, but my message has been communicated. Absolutely. Yes. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's why I created a new website. Um, it's called mboo.com. And it's basically um, a bunch of resources that are really ge geared towards learners that want to improve their vocabulary and speak more fluently. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, obviously, I'm going to put links to this um, in the show notes. Um, so make sure you go and check it out. I've also had a listen to Lara's podcast. Very good. Lots of great vocabulary. R&R &R vocabulary, you might call it as well. <laughs> um, so make sure you go and check it out. So thanks a lot for your time, Lara. Um, good luck with everything. Thank you so much. And we'll see you soon. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Okay, so that was me speaking to Lara about great ways to learn English. So let's have a look at that R&R &R vocab. We had, she just made the cut. So as we said, like you're just about in the category. We usually use this for teams at school when you have to pick teams. Some people are not included, so they don't make the cut. Lara used some lovely language when she said, um, I could change the language on my phone and I sure thing did. Very, very colourful, I would say. Lovely vocabulary. She also said you have to nail the accent. So when you nail it, it's when you do it absolutely perfectly. I had the term take pity on me. So when people take pity on you, they feel sorry for you. We had nursery rhymes. So a nursery rhyme is something like Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. That's a nursery rhyme. And we also had the term how to curse, like how to swear. That's an American term. In English, we say swear. Um, but the great tips I think Lara gave, one was singing along to Eminem or something fast like that, because that will push you to speak in a more fluent way. So I thought that was excellent. And these improv classes, because that's kind of like conversation, isn't it? When you go into a conversation, you've got no idea what you're going to say. It's all just improvisation. So doing this class helps your brain to go and find those words quicker. So if you can do either of those things, make sure you do. Anyway, remember, all of the R&R &R vocab is on the website and links to Lara's website, which I say you should definitely go and check out her podcast too. One other thing I love about her podcast is that she does it in stories. And you know how much I love stories. I will see you again in two weeks, people. But in the meantime, just keep on rocking, baby. Thanks so much for listening to Rock and Roll English. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit rockandrollenglish.com and facebook.com slash rockandrollenglish. We'll catch you next time.